Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and so excited to show you this one. This was, I think, my number one game of Gen Con last year when I got to play an early version of it. This is Horror on the Orient Express. I'll be doing a partial or full solo playthrough. We'll see how far I get, and then giving my impressions at the end. And as always, we take no compensation for our coverage. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast with reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and say hi on our Discord. All right, so first things first, a few disclaimers. This is an early prototype. It's basically a handmade prototype of the game, so just keep in mind that anything you see could change. And secondly, this game is incredibly hard in the times that I've played it. They tune it to be very challenging. So I am taking the Wimpy Man <laughs> route and using two of these easier chips that go in this uh, bag you draw from every turn to see like what the enemies do. So this is going to be a much easier game, a much easier game than it would be normally. This is basically the easiest mode that's recommended in the rule book. Now, you know, hilariously, when I still lose, that'll be fun. <laughs> but just please keep that in mind as I'm playing. People are like, oh, why is this game easy? If it's easy, I don't think it will be. But uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that's clear. So what are you doing in the game? This is a Lovecraftian Cthulhu-ish game. It's from the uh, Call of Cthulhu company, Chaosium. And you are on a train that has been transported to the Dreamlands. Monsters are trying to derail you and eat the passengers. You got a vampire just hanging out and uh, sucking the blood of everybody. There are cultists hidden among you. And you just want to get the heck home. You just want to get out of here. And how you accomplish that is a twofold goal. First of all, you have to get to the train to progress along the Dreamlands until you get to the end of the line. And uh, as you go along, you'll be flipping over these landscapes and having more gates open up, doing terrible things to you, spawning more monsters. But then additionally, as I mentioned, there are some cultists among you. You have six suspects in the game, although a lot of things about them are randomized each game. And I should say a ton of the stuff in the game is randomized. So even though it is like the same scenario each time, <laughs> there are very many differences in how it plays out. But yeah, at least one of these six suspects and up to, I think, two or three, maybe four is the max, are cultists. Now, you don't need to definitively determine which one is which, but when you get to the end of the line, if you get to the end of the line, you uh, have to name whether each one is a cultists or not and then reveal their tokens because their cultist status is based on these clue tokens that mostly start face down that's one face up one there and only if you get every single suspect right whether they're a cultist or not do you actually survive otherwise i guess they complete some dread ritual and you never make it out of the dreamlands and as for the actual gameplay there are seven train cars including the locomotive this is a very large game by the way so i'm only showing you parts at a time uh, you'll have characters in the train cars. Your characters have circular bases. Here I'm playing with a gunslinger, and you'll see my other character in a second. The suspects have square spaces, or bases, I should say. And then you have dice representing the passengers, and they have different moods. So they can be scared. They can be insane. That's a really bad one. They can be happy, which is rare. They can be wounded. They can be meh, nonplussed <laughs> to be in the dreamland. And they can be pissed off at you. Oh, Craig, what was this one? I think they were scared, right? And one way to lose the game is to have too many of your passengers die. They get a little coffin placed over top of them. You have seven of these, and if you lose all of them, you lose. You'll also be spawning monsters, and they'll be, like, attacking people and such. There are five of each of the three monster colors, and if all 15 monsters are out at one time, you lose. And then there are also these essence tokens that'll be going on the gates on the landscape as you go along. If a gate has no essence tokens on it, then it's closed and nothing bad will happen. If it has at least one, then its effect persists. You always have one gate that can't be closed, by the way. If you ever place all of the essence tokens, they're just out on gates and such, you also lose the game. So lots of ways to fail <laughs> and uh, only one way to succeed. Get to the end of the line, know who the cultists are. Now, you have to play at least two characters, so I'm two-handing. Like I said, I have the Gunslinger. They'll have uh, some basic setup stuff, what sanity they start with. You've got this blue and purple. I forget what the names are, but purple is generally better. It makes like your spells better and affects some other things. You've got uh, their starting stamina, which I think is seven for every character. And you have like a little token here that marks uh, the like extent of your recovery. So some things could like, move that back, and then you would only be able to go up to six stamina. And he has a starting location, the Salon. And then you flip it over and you got the basic actions. Every character has their own unique basic action. For the gunslinger, he can shoot uh, monsters and temporarily banish them. Banishing sounds great, but it's actually the worst way to deal with monsters, despite the cool sounding name. Now, additionally, each character gets to pick from some randomly selected uh, tokens. 
So everyone gets one of these that will become like a little trait. So I could be a lucky retired gunslinger or an educated one. These are one-time effects that usually like affect uh, how other things are in the game and like what's added. So for example, I could start with one of my skills, which we'll get to in a second, upgraded. I could remove my stamina limit and get quality rest so I can uh, have a lot more stamina, which will be used for minor actions, as you'll see. I can start with two general skills instead of one. Those will be starting skills that go in here in these slots. Uh, I could start the game with a random artifact card, which is a one-time use really powerful card. I could add a really beneficial token to the event bag that'll make the passengers like me better. Oh, and another uh, beneficial token to the event bag. That's pretty cool. But these are not all the ones available. I think they sent me eight, but you always use six no matter what the player count is. Uh, but I'm sure as the crowdfunding campaign goes along, we'll have more. I'm really, <laughs> I got to say, I really like making the event bag nicer, which is also what the easy thing did. So I think I'm going to do both the ones. I'll make him a respected retired gunslinger. And in a moment, I'll make my other character lucky. So that's going to add the lucky and the respected tokens to the event bag. So here we go. These will go in there later. We'll talk about what this all means. Additionally, each of us has to pick one lucid skill. This is an option we can use every time we rest. So basically, you'll be putting uh, out as you take main actions, these little tokens to show you can't use that main action again. On each of your turns, you have to use one main action. And every two main actions you use will then allow you when you rest to gain this little chevron bonus and upgrade one of your actions or learn a new action, filling these empty slots, or using your lucid skill in lieu of uh, upgrading one of your actions. So what have we got? Gather a suspect. That's what the square token means from anywhere to your train car. Ooh, skip drawing an event token this turn. That's so good. <laughs> move one essence token from one gate to another. Ooh, or move a monster from limbo. That's pretty darn good for the gunslinger because their basic action is to put a monster in limbo. Uh, so that's neat. Change a crazy person to a wounded person. Oh, man, you'll see crazy passengers, <laughs> insane passengers are like one of the nastiest ones to deal one. Or, oh, push a monster. Well, I have other ways to do that. I'm really leaning towards these three. Skipping drawing an event token. Uh, healing an insane passenger or getting rid of a monster. Uh, let's do, let's do, I, th I think uh, my other character, the preacher, would make most sense for that one, helping passengers. And we'll have the uh, gunslinger have the skip removing something this turn. All right, almost done character setup. Again, we have six options. These are general skills that anybody can take. So we've got fast talk. Talking is going to allow us to reveal the clues that you saw. And this is like a really good one. <laughs> so that'll help us figure out who the cultists are. Firearms will let us banish a whole bunch of monsters by shooting through a train car that has open curtains. You'll see those soon. First aid will let us heal somebody if nobody angry is there. It's not uh, too bad. Disguise in a train car with closed curtains. Ooh, change places with a suspect. And immediately take another main action. Ooh, ooh, so that would let me like double put out gold and level up faster. Oh man, remove two uh, essence tokens from a chosen gate. That's crazy. And then I can brawl, but the gunslinger has lots of ways to deal with monsters. I think I'm going to go with Fast Stalk and Cthulhu Mythos. And currently the gunslinger is a little bit cruddier with talking to people. So let's give him the fast talking skill. And here I've mentioned her, but you haven't actually seen her yet. Here's my lucky committed preacher. Uh, she's got the basic skill to turn a mad person into a happy person. And now she's got Cthulhu Mythos. She's the one who can change an insane person into a wounded person. And uh, yeah, she's got lots of uh, skills to like congregate people around and do stuff with them and deal with the mythos. So cool. We're uh, ready to go and I can show you how the game starts. So we'll have the gunslinger go first. And here's how a turn commences. So you take one major and up to two basic actions and they can be in any order, but you have to fully resolve them. A major action is moving one of these cubes to one of these places. Or resting, if uh, that's what you want to do for your turn. Resting gets all your golden cubes back. It lets you level up or use the chevrons for your lucid skill. And it also gets a bunch of stamina back. Because each basic action you take is going to cost one stamina. So you will be losing that slowly as you use those other actions. Basic actions let you move up to two train cars. Uh, use items if you have them. Open or close the shades. That's going to affect monsters and the vampire. <laughs> uh, use the action of your train car. Some of them have little bonus actions. If you have these special mystic tokens, you can spend them to learn a spell. Or you can mess around with the suspects and try to like find out things from them. So after you do your major action and up to two basic actions, you draw an event from the event bag. And as you saw, I put a whole bunch of stuff in the event bag that is very positive. That's usually not the case. It's mostly negative. 
And most of the tokens are going to have one of these four numbers on them. So you'll see like the one dot and one gold little quadrant there, two dots and two gold, three dots and three gold. They'll be going over places. We have some that don't start in the bag. And whenever there are three of them, whether they're like X'd out or not, so like here, these three are covered and this one is not, then after you draw your event token, you'll do what's called resolving the event sequence. And you'll resolve the abilities, the negative abilities, of whatever is showing on top. And then you remove one token from each thing, and you go back to it. You can have tokens uh, stack on each other. Some tokens will have an X, and nothing bad will happen. But basically, this means that every three or four player turns, give or take, you know, again, depending on how the bag is composed and what you do in other cases, you will have, like, a bad guy turn where a bunch of stuff happens. But you don't have to resolve bad things every turn. It's based on the event tokens. And then finally, at the end of every player's turn, they move the train one space forward. The train, at least this uh, prototype one, has like little uh, tabs that kind of have it go in. And it starts right here by the 45. So each space is a single thing. And whenever it crosses over to where it's uh, next to one of these landscape things, you'll flip it. You'll put essence tokens on the new gates there. And the train needs to get all the way to the end. And by the way, there's the, uh, <laughs> the end of the train, the locomotive with one insane person on it. But anyway, Gunslinger. So what skills do they have? They have Trailblazing, which can get rid of Essence tokens, the things that are making the gates active. And if you run out of them, you lose. They can talk with Salon Gambit with certain types of passengers. The Talk 3 is going to make the talking more effective. I might talk on the first turn. I'll show you how it works. You can Bounty Hunt to push some monsters. And basically, you're trying to push monsters back behind the train. That's the only way to actually remove them back to the supply. Because remember, if all 15 monsters are out, you lose. If you use abilities to banish them, they go to this little banished area right over here. But when, uh, whenever all the event tokens resolve, they all just come right back. So again, you got to like actually push them so that they leave the monster behind, the train leaves the monster behind to defeat them. So he's got Bounty Hunt. He's got True Grit, where you can turn an angry or scared person into a meh person and then can send somebody to an adjacent train car. The uh, white symbol there means any passenger. He can have a posse of happy and or angry people attack the monsters for him, but they'll become wounded, which is not a great way for them to be. Or he can fast talk the general one I got. So let's go ahead and show you what a talking action looks like first. So I'll go ahead and do that. I am talk five with a mere happy passenger. And I got to pick who it is because it might uh, turn them into a not happy passenger. So let's do the uh, <laughs> we'll have uh, me fast talk this guy right here because I don't want to mess up someone who's already in a really positive place. So talking again is how I'm going to flip these clue tokens about people. And here's how you tell if they're a cultist as you flip these things. So you've got a collection of tickets, first of all. So three of them are going to Constantinople, and some of them have other tickets. You've got a mix of desires, these green ones, some purple, some brown. And you've got a mix of, I forget what these are, but just like interesting uh, details and like possessions on them. Again, some purple and some brown. And what makes a cultist? First of all, there is a single uh, eyeball token that is a blood red fez. That person's a cultist. It doesn't matter what else there is. So you want to find that one as soon as possible. But apart from that auto thing, if someone has a ticket to Constantinople, which is a 50% chance, and desires an artifact as one of their desires, which is a two out of, what is that, 12 chance, then they are a cultist unless they also have an elder sign, which is one of the eyeballs. And then finally, anybody who has four or more purples has to be a cultist as well. And this is the entire allotment of tokens. They are used every time. So you can do some process of elimination as you go. Now, I started with two desires of suspects revealed, and that also made them angry at me because I knew some of their secrets. So you'll see that these two suspects, uh, her, this is Zamep Zame, if I'm reading that right, the crime book writer. Uh, she will not let me use her little power. Basically, for one of your basic actions, if you're in a space with a suspect, you can use their bonus, like the psychologist here can turn anybody into a meh person. But then you flip it over like you've kind of... Uh, you know, cashed in their goodwill for you until you do something to get it back. But yeah, because I found out that she desires, uh oh, artifacts. <laughs> that means if she's going to Constantinople, remember that's a 50% chance and she doesn't have an elder sign. She's a cultist. That's a pretty decent chance there. And here, by the way, is the other random one that I started with, Seamus Sullivan, the sly boots. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, he uh, wants to be somewhere with five people. And when you find out their first desire, you get like a little mini quest for them, which uh, lets you fulfill their desire. So I could get this guy into a place with five passengers and then uh, use a basic action to say, hey, here are your five passengers. 
But here's the thing. When you do that, you reveal all their tokens. So you find out immediately if they're occultists or not. But then you flip this card over. There's a bunch of copies of each of the desires. You don't know which one you've gotten. And here, I'll just kind of like sneaky style. There's a there's a blue side and a purple side. And you flip it to the purple side if they're occultists. The blue side if they're not. The blue side helps you. The purple side punishes you in a terrible way. So you don't want to just like willy-nilly be fulfilling desires. In case, you know, that's a horrible ritual. The cultists want you to fulfill for them. And yeah, same deal if I get an artifact and bring it over to Zainab here, then she'll be super happy. But <laughs> again, there's a decent chance, like uh, close to 50% that she's a cultist, so I probably don't want to do that yet. But all that is the lead up to how fast talking and just talk checks work in general. So when you do a talk check, there are tokens in the bag. And this is kind of a uh, push your luck mechanic. So some of them are just going to have a single picture, and this will refer to different types of clues you can find out, like this is the desire. If you get a pair of these, or for each pair you get showing the same icon, the talk, if it's successful, will allow you to reveal that kind of token. So like here, if I'm talking to this passenger and I get two of these, I can ask them anybody's desire. Like they, you know, they heard uh, Jean talking about how much he, he wants something, and they'll show me what it is. So that's what you're looking for. But then there's also these ones that have two icons on them. And the thing at the top is the bad icon. This is kind of like uh, Ink and Gold, Diamant, if anybody's played that, in that you are not trying, <laughs> you are not trying to get doubles of these because if you do the talk immediately stops and you failed so like if i get two of these and that will also uh, determine what the negative is so here that mad person i talked to if i talk to them too much they're like wait what do you say about monsters wait wh what do you say somebody's a cultist ah! they would turn insane so the the penalty up here is what happens but if you succeed in the talk check which means you stop by the way if you succeed you know find out some clues you also get to take one of the revealed bonuses here so i would get a free item if i did didn't get a double. Yeah, so that's how it all works. Let's do it. And Bucky Burton, the respected retired gunslinger, is fast talking. It says talk five. That means I get to draw five tokens at first, only keeping the good ones and putting any of the bad ones back. So a higher talk value is always good. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. That was pretty good. Oh, no, actually, it wasn't that good. <laughs> so these three go back and I keep these. So I'm already halfway to some revelations. This one would let me reveal anything on someone with a, I think it is a first class. T oh, no, this just lets me reveal what somebody's ticket is. And this will let me reveal any of the blue tokens. All right, and now I just draw until I want to stop. So, hey, there's a second class. I can only reveal a second class suspect. There's three second class and three first class. Oh, there's my uh, my first negative. Don't want to have a double of that. Okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten any actual good doubles yet, so let's keep going. Oh, beautiful. So I could stop now, but I could dig deeper. Let's go like one more, right? One more won't hurt. Okay, one more would hurt. Now, I probably want to stop because uh, there <laughs> that's a lot of possibility of me getting uh, messed up here. And here, I'll just pause for a second because I want to remember what the probabilities are. So if I didn't miss anything, there are three of each of the good ones and two of each of the bad ones. So like right now, there are three tokens that could hurt me, four tokens that could pair up and help me, and then a bunch of tokens wouldn't do anything. Should I go one more time? Sure, let's do just one more, just one. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. I'm definitely going to stop. Definitely going to stop. <laughs> so I will get to reveal somebody's ticket. I will get to reveal anything I like on a second class passenger. This does nothing because it didn't pair up. And then I can get an item, a, oh, a handshake. That'll let me make one of the suspects friendly to me so I can use their power. Uh, or one of these mystic tokens. This can be used to learn a spell. It can be used to redraw one of the event tokens after you draw it. It can be used to cancel the uh, the ritual spell, which can be really negative. And here I'm leaning to, yeah, let's go for the item, because maybe if I get an artifact and then what's her name turns out not to be mean, I can fulfill her desire. All right, so let's do the item first. This is a shared resource, so anybody can use it. I got see, a grimoire. So uh, half the deck is grimoires and half are artifacts. The lady wanted an artifact, so I can't give this to her. So uh, if I use this, I would lose one sanity. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one more way to lose. Whenever you lose sanity, you lose your light, right, uh, leftmost brain. And you can, uh, there are some effects that'll give you sanity back. But yeah, you lose one, and then you can move a chosen suspect to your car and use, ooh, their skill, their like little bonus thing, without spending a handshake. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, especially if uh, we end up having some extra sanity later. But for now, we're not going to do anything with that, I think. All right, so that was my bonus. Now let's reveal some stuff about these suspects. One ticket, one second class. So the ticket is, I, kinda, I think, kind of obvious. I want to find out if she's going to Constantinople. 
She's not. She's going to Belgrade. So remember, an artifact plus Constantinople, if there's no elder sign in here, means she's a cultist. So we've dodged that bullet, but she's got two purple. So if two more of these are purple, then she's still a cultist. <laughs> and then I got anything for a second class passenger. Let's find out more about our friend Seamus. What else does he want besides be with five people? Oh, he wants a grimoire. Interesting. Now, only the first revealed desire will actually set up their quest, so I can't give him a grimoire to fulfill his quest and find out the rest of his stuff. But yeah, the only way he could be a cultist now is if three out of the four of these are purple, it's kind of low odds, or if he has the blood red fez, which is one out of all the blue tokens. So yeah, that's, that's not too bad. I, I could maybe get him with some people and just take my chances. So that was my first main action. Remember, I could have done that before or after basic actions, and they won't usually take that long. <laughs> that was certainly a more involved one. All right, now what can I do for basic actions? I could move. I could uh, use the, the grimoire I just got, although that seems a little bit premature. I could use the train car action. Let's see what we got here. These are randomized, and only three of them are active in a game. So the salon would let me change a scared or angry person into a meh person. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good, because uh, generally happy is the best, then meh. Then angry and scared are kind of like good and bad, depending on the situation. And then uh, wounded and insane are the worst, of course. So sure, let's uh, spend one stamina. So take it down to six to change one of these people into a happy person. We just uh, wind and dine them in the salon. And then I could interact with her. She's Fran Fletcher, the medium. So if I called in a favor, then she would let me remove an essence from a chosen gate. I don't think I want to do that yet until I see like some later gates that might be a little bit uh, weaker and easier to get rid of. And I can't do much else with her because I don't have like a quest to give her. I can't like throw her out because I know she's a cultist. There's lots of little actions you can take once you know who somebody is. So let's stop there for now and not take a second basic action. No need to burn through things. And also I'm seeing that there is a blue monster right here, right by the back of the train. And the gunslinger's got a main action that can get rid of that dude. So I think I might want to stay there and do that next time. All right, so with the end of the first turn, I'm going to draw a token. And this is the vampire activation. Now it doesn't happen yet. It just covers this spot. And now if I get two more of these spaces filled, we'll actually do stuff. And to briefly mention what the vampire does, right now he's in the fourgon, which I think is the baggage car. And uh, the windows are open, which is good, because the vampire is stronger when the windows are closed. There's not much sunlight in the Dreamlands, but there is a little bit. And basically, when the vampire activates, he'll look at the weakest passenger in his train car and then do something to them based on whether the windows are open or closed. So if there's a wounded person in his train car, he will kill them, drink their blood, which powers him up. You take off the uh, leftmost tile that he still has. But then, like, if there was a scared person and the windows were uh, open, he would only hurt them. If there was an insane person and windows are open, he'd be like, what's up, bro, and leave him alone. <laughs> or same thing with an angry person. So, like, right now, if I could find some way to move this scared person out of this train car, he would just, uh, you know, be a little intimidated by the angry person and go somewhere else. But his uh, action will also move him back and forth. And the thing is, uh, <laughs> it's great to have windows open for the vampire. But the green monsters like windows open because then they just snatch passengers out and eat them. So you want to close the windows for green, open them for vampire. It's just a whole window thing. All right, but that was it for Bucky. So now uh, the train moves one space. It will move more with these blue train tokens that are in the event bag. And those are fast tokens. So they don't count as like your draw for the turn. You just keep on going. And the locomotive starts at speed one, but you can, as a basic action up there, move it to speed two or even three. And that will add more of these fast train tokens to the bag. Now, <laughs> that's great to do if you think you know who the cultists are. Not so great uh, if you need more time to investigate. All right, good job, Bucky. Let's get to uh, Lucy, our lucky. Oh, I should have had Lucky Bucky. That would have been a genius name convention there. <laughs> so what are her main actions? She can gather up to three meh or happy passengers and or suspects from the adjacent cars into her car. She can talk with someone who's meh or happy. She can calm down someone who's angry or scared. She can lead a joint prayer only in the sanctuary car, which is where she starts. She gets to remove an essence from a gate. And then if there's at least three meh or happy, I should really look up what, <laughs> it's clearly not meh. I'm not sure what the uh, the uh, the expression or emotion is supposed to be there. But yeah, she if she has three meh or happy people, she can rem remove a second uh, essence from a gate. She can send a happy person to a train car and turn a wounded person into a scared person. So encourage her fellow people to help out the wounded. Or she can just remove, this is the general one I got, a uh, two essence from a gate straight up, which is great. 
And what are our current gates? Well, we've got, this one is open because there's three tokens on it. That's how the game starts. Remove an essence token from a game, which doesn't do anything bad except make it more likely you'll lose from essence because if those run out, that's it. Now, I think she can do a little nice combo here, like gather some people, calm them down, and then lead them in prayer. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's gather up to three. Oh, no, no. Uh, it has to be, oh, they have to be happy or mess. So and maybe she'll have to move to help them out. Oh, yeah, here we go. We can go to the uh, this car. So let's have her, for her basic action, move one from the sanctuary to the foregon. And then she will calm them down. So they're both scared or angry, and they're both, if you have a two of the same thing, it means you repeat it. They're both going to turn into meh, which interestingly enough makes them more vulnerable to the vampire than if they were just angry. But my plan is to move them out, so that won't matter. And then I think she'll move back to the sanctuary because I'm going to gather them in and then pray with them in a second. So there we go. That's a second stamina gone. And we draw. You can see when you're not explaining a lot of rules, the game goes very quickly. Oh, the train moves, which means, oh, in a second, we're going to see another landscape. And then, oh, we got another one of these. Where are my nice happy ones? So this one, when it activates, is going to have us draw a crew card. We're just going to have the crew freak out in just lots of fun and interesting ways. <laughs> we'll see what it happens. But yes, uh, if we draw a four or a one in a future turn, we will then activate all this stuff. Uh, so crud. She hasn't gotten a chance to get people out of the vampire's car yet. That's okay. We got a lot of good tokens in there. Pretty decent chance that nothing bad will happen. Okay, what was I going to do with Bucky? Oh, uh, wait, I got to move the train which is pretty big because that's going to uh, reveal a new landscape. Uh, the order of these is randomized by whichever starting. There's different starting ones of these with different starting gates you pick. So like it won't always be three, three, four. It might be like five, three, and they have different effects and different things. Oh, this one's not any gates. It's just something bad. Reign of Blood. On reveal, discard the leftmost vampire strength tile. That honestly could have been a whole lot worse. <laughs> I don't hate that. Because it does mean that now the vampire will kill a scared passenger even if the window is open. But, you know, as long as I don't keep scared or wounded passengers with them, we should be fine. All right, so now we get back to Bucky. And I think I want to punch that, uh, that monster, right? Let's punch him. <laughs> so I'm going to bounty hunt. It says I have to be in a train car with exactly one monster, which I am. It says push plus zero. I'll show you what that means in a second. And if the monster falls behind, remove an essence from a gate of its color. I was kind of hoping we would get a gate that had the blue color of the monster next to me, but no such luck. So how pushing works is you have the modifier. In this case, it was plus zero. And you add it to the speed of the train for the total movement of the monster. Because if you're going faster, it's easier to leave them behind. So in this case, it's zero plus one, which is one. So he would move backwards one train car. But that just means that he is gone back to the blue supply. And he will not bother us anymore. But uh, yeah, we've done nothing about green and red over here. Now, monsters activate based on the empty space of the four. So like we've covered two and three. If we cover one, then blue monsters will attack. The big one means every blue monster. Then red monsters will attack. Only a single one is what the small one means. And then we'll spawn more green monsters. And this means green monsters will attack, then blue, and then red. Now, we took care of the only blue monster, which is great, because either way, they would have activated. So maybe Bucky should go... I don't know. <laughs> he could uh, banish with his basic action the red or the green. The red one is a reaver, and they resolve the first action that applies. So the reaver right now is with uh, <laughs> is with uh, passengers. So he would make investigators lose stamina. He would turn one happy passenger wounded or kill any passenger if there are no happy passengers. And then the howler, the green, if he's in a car with open windows, which he's not right now, we'll ignore that. If he's in a car with uh, no passenger, oh, sorry. If he's by a car with passengers, if the window's open, he does bad things. But otherwise, he moves one and then scares somebody in that new car. So since green's window is closed, red sounds a lot worse to me. So let's go ahead and use a two stamina for the gunslinger to come over here. And then he's using his unique basic action to banish one monster. It's going to be the red dude here. And again, banishing is very temporary. The guy just goes here. And when uh, this resolves, when we get a third space filled, they'll just come right back afterwards. All right, and speaking of, oh, we got one of our good ones. This is one of the ones we added to make the game easier. So we can pick any angry or scared passenger and make them meh. Love it. I feel like scared passengers annoy me more. So let's go ahead and do that. Yay. And that's great because now Lucy has time to uh, pull in the passengers who are about to get attacked by the vampire. So she can gather up to three meh, happy, or suspects to her train. So let's do that and that. And that's already enough, right? Yeah, she needed uh, three happy or normal. Okay. 
Oh, that's right. If the green guy activates, he's going to scare somebody here. So sure, she'll go ahead and do third. Or does she want to pull one of the suspects? That's the one that we're not friends with. He... Ooh, ooh, let's pull him in. This is good. That's Jean, the psychologist, and he can move to a train and then change anybody there to meh. And insane people on the train are going to boost a lot of effects, like whenever a new gate appears. So yeah, let's have her go and use a basic action to use his ability, which is sadly going <laughs> to take it away. But there's only two insane people on the train, and whenever she rests, she can fix one of them. So let's send him to the locomotive with the other one, and he's going to turn them mess. So we've already cured some of the insanity uh, all around the train. You know, I'm thinking it might be a little wacky, but I'm kind of thinking I might rest with her soon just to heal the other insane guy. And I've known insane people on the uh, train. And when you rest, you get five stamina back. So what the hey, let's go ahead and use her special basic action to turn one of these mad people happy and just spread some joy around the train. All right. And hey, there's our luck token. That was uh, one of the ones from our starting traits, not from the uh, easy mode we're playing on. But you can see how powerful these things are, because we are getting entire player turns to like react to stuff before badness happens. That's why this is easy mode. Just repeating that again. Easy mode, everybody. <laughs> All right, so that brings it back to Bucky. Back to Bucky. Uh, you could trailblaze. So what is this one? It removes an essence from our current landscape. And then I can return a discarded train token to remove another essence from that landscape. And so far... Oh, wait, I got to move the train. God, I always got to move the train. Have I moved it enough? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so we had one, two, three, four player turns. And then we had one blue thing. So I think we should be there. Yes, we are about to reveal another one. And Bucky's thing referred to a current landscape, which means that the train is adjacent to it in some way. So when we move next turn, we will no longer be adjacent to that. Uh, which means maybe we should get rid of it. I don't know. I feel like I'm more worried about spawning uh, <laughs> gates. Well, you know what? How about this? Let's uh, go ahead and do Salon Gabbin and have uh, Bucky talk again. So there's a talk three this time. I can pick a meh, happy, or angry person. If I succeed, I get to turn them into meh. If I fail, I punch them in the face <laughs> after they insult me or something, and they become wounded. <sighs> Don't want to fail. So clearly, Bucky will pick the meh person already in his car because it can't get worse if I succeed. And it was talk three, so I draw three and keep the good ones, which is none. Great start, Mike. Great start. And now it's push your luck moment. So... Oh, good. We got a second class. The second I get a good one, I'm going to stop. Oh, crud already. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's a ticket. I thought that was a second class. Okay, I got uh, four that are good, one that is bad. Four that are good. Oh, four that are good, two that are bad. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I really don't want to push my luck here. So I can find out a ticket and then get an item or a handshake. Ooh, bring back a passenger's power. I'm going to go for the item. I really want to get the artifact to give to the girl, maybe. Am I crazy? Or hey, just to use ourselves. What? That's another grimoire. The Book of Iod. So again, we lose a sanity if we read from it. Remove all monsters of a chosen color from all train cars. Oh god, each of these train cards, all scared people become insane. I don't think I have any scared people. Ooh, that's really good. So like after we spawn, I can use this maybe for the green monsters and potentially get rid of two green monsters for one shot and not have any penalty. That would be ridiculous if I could make it happen. Okay, then I get to figure out somebody else's ticket. Let's do that. All right, so there's not much reason to figure out what Seamus' ticket is now, except to eliminate uh, how many purples he has. But really, he's going to be more useful for doing the blues. So let's go somebody else. So remember, a Constantinople ticket mixed with an artifact means you're a cultist unless you have a Elder Sign. This guy has three desires, any of which could be the other artifact, and only one blue to be an Elder Sign. So if he has Constantinople, he's really bad. He doesn't. Oh, wow. That's crazy because we've now seen two non-Constantinople and three of them are Constantinople. So almost everybody else is going to Constantinople. So I really want to figure out where the other artifact is so I can eliminate those people as almost certainly cultists. All right, now I can take some basic actions. I'm on the space with Pedro Polymer, the chef de cuisine. I can call in his favor to heal ooh, all stamina and gain a sanity. That's really good. But Bucky's sanity isn't too bad. Wait, am I doing Bucky's turn? I should be, right? Yeah, because he started his third action. Okay, because I forgot that we got lucky with our last couple draws. So Bucky could go and banish the green guy. Should I do it? Hmm. Right now, there's a 50-50 chance the green will activate, and all he would do is move forward and scare somebody. But now that Lucy uh, used her non-scaring... Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So he'll use one basic action to move, one basic action to banish this guy. 
It leaves him with two stamina, but he could have the chef help him if he goes back there. And also, if you can kind of see it in the second class sleeping thing, for one stamina, you can get three back. So basically get two in the wash. All right, there's not much left in the bag. Oh, oh, wait a second. So this is an interesting one. When you get more than one for the same spot, they stack. And I still have two empty spots, so we don't trigger the events. But it means that when we do trigger the events, only one comes off of each stack. So we'll be quicker to trigger the next event next time. So that was pretty interesting. But still, nothing happening yet. Well, except for the train moving forward. So what do we got this time? Oh my gosh. On reveal, swap this landscape with the previous landscape. And add one essence to each gate. I'm getting super lucky, y'all. <laughs> this is the nicest these have ever been. So that does nothing? Does that really do nothing? That is crazy. I This game is not a nice game. I cannot believe that I had a gate not hurt me at all. Wow. But hey, I'll take it. I will definitely take it. It means essence is not as bad as it's been in any of the other games I've played. So I'm not complaining. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, enact my plan and rest with Lucy. But first, since she's going to get five stamina back, let's do some kind of basic action. What do I want to do? She could have the medium remove a token. I guess I'll just use her power to make somebody happy, right? Just spreading the love all over the place. Okay, and then she's going to rest. So she gets one chevron. She could gain new skills or level up a skill that's so powerful, but I'm doing this for a very specific reason. I'm going to turn the only insane person left on the train currently into an injured person. Because even though they haven't happened yet, somehow, <laughs> having a lot of insane people on the train is really not great. Like, it, it does a lot of bad things to you, usually. All right, so sadly, she doesn't get to learn any new skills. She does get all five of her stamina back. And then all of these return. And that's, I guess you could take another basic action, but I, uh, we're pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it like it is. All right, so here we go. This is a fast one. Is this another nice one I added? Where'd this come from? Oh, no, that was from... Respected. Yeah, yeah, his respected one gave us this. We get to pick any person and flip them. Wow. So we could get back the ability to turn anybody meh. Although we just took care of our only insane... I forgot I could have done that. <laughs> but maybe setting that up for later is good. Or she could... Ooh, move to a chosen car and reveal any clue of a person there? That's really good. Or what can Seamus do? Move to a car and push plus one. So we could push a monster twice. Although we're just about to deal with a lot of the monsters. I think we might be okay. Yeah, I like the idea of getting more clues and figuring out who the cultists are. So let's... Go ahead and flip her. Okay, but that was fast. And up, ah, there we go. Event time. So we cover this up, and then we're going to resolve things from top to bottom. So first, all greens activate, one blue activates, and we spawn reds. So for monster spawning, you check how many of the indicated colors icons are on open gates. In this case, we have a single one. And they always start from the back and move forward. So we've got a single red guy right there. It really isn't too bad. Okay, then the vampire activates and then moves to the right until he gets to an occupied train. So he won't go to an empty train. Uh, but if uh, he can't move to the right because he will never go to the locomotive, then he'll go to the left. And yeah, we just got everybody out of there. So he's going to go in here with a meh and an angry and the windows are closed. So if we open them, he would scare the meh person uh, or he would do nothing to the angry person. So that's a pretty good train for him to be in. Okay, next we're going to resolve a crew card. In each car with two or more angry people, of which there are none, <laughs> an angry person wounds somebody. And in each car with one or more angry person, all suspects move left. That was not too bad. We avoided the brawl by making people happy. All right, so here's a suspect with an angry person. So they get away from the, uh, the, <laughs> the shouting person who's like, there's a vampire out there. I saw them. No, you didn't. And I don't think she reverses movement when she would go left. So I think she just stays where she is. But yeah, you can kind of see how me like playing on the easier mode and getting more turns tends to cascade because like I'm benefiting in not having to resolve things that are too bad. Now, this one, though, I can't <laughs> I can't avoid entirely because this is ritual power. So you've got this little ritual power here. And when it activates, you put one of these ritual power tokens there. And there are very few ways to get rid of those except for finding cultists pretty much. But here's the interesting thing. Nothing else happens. It's actually the green hand icon, which is still in the bag, that'll trigger the incantation. And you can always see what the topmost one is. Here it says for each ritual power point, discard the leftmost vampire strength tile and turn a scared person insane. Once again, we have no scared people at the moment, which is awesome. Making the vampire stronger is maybe not great, but we are managing our crew pretty well now. But yeah, that's it for that. And then finally, these people come back. I think it's this order. Red, then blue, then green. So I think red is here and green is here. Well, never mind. I guess uh, maybe we'll use the <laughs> the spell to kill all the red people. All right, and then bloop, bloop, 
bloop, so we are closer to having another crew card. And we only shuffle these in, including the ones we took out at the beginning of the game, uh, once we've gone through the entire bag, so not yet. And the train keeps chugging along, and we're back to Bucky. He could rest too, because he is really low on basic uh, stamina. But I want to get a second thing so I can level up twice. So I could Trailblaze, although I'm really not too worried about Essence at the moment. I could get a Posse <laughs> and have them push those red people. Uh, I'd have to pick Happy or Angry people, and they become wounded. That's, that's the bad part. I don't know if I want to wound two people. But if I did, I wouldn't have to use the book yet, and it would get both of these off because it's push zero for each posse member I use. But yeah, that would take care of both those guys. Oh, never mind, never mind. You can choose up to two train cars and one passenger gets affected. So we'd only be able to push one of the reds. Well, you know what here, while I think about it, I'm going to use one basic action to sleep in the car and go up to four stamina. And I'm going to use another to have my uh, crime book writer, the one I just befriended, go to any train and reveal a clue of a suspect. Who do I want to find out about? I really want to kind of find out what these blues are and if this guy is safe, because if he is, I can get him to five passengers like in the uh, the sanctuary car maybe pretty easily. So sure, we'll say there's a story over there and she'll go talk to him. And let's reveal his first blue, which is a hidden weapon, not purple and not the red fez. <laughs> so at this point, we don't care if he's Constantinople. All we care about is whether he has the blood red fez in these two tokens or whether he has four purple overall, which would mean every single one of these uh, unrevealed ones have to be purple. So I, it is pretty good odds that I can complete his quest without any negatives, really. And then, gosh, what am I doing for my main action? <laughs> I could just rest, I guess. But it seems like a waste when I would level up one more time if I don't. I could do the posse, but I'd have to hurt the person. But it would get rid of a whole month. It's pretty dang good. Yeah, okay. So I'll do posse, which is up to two train guards. I'm only going to pick one. Going to pick this one here because it has angry and happy people. I get to push a monster one, so red is gone. And I'll say that the angry person got wounded in the process. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm lying. Everything I just said is a lie because I forgot that for Posse to work, I have to be in a train car with windows open, and I'm not. Well, here, let's say I didn't rest in the car yet. <laughs> and I'll open the windows. And then everything is hunky-dory. Okay, so this guy got injured and you pushed the red out. Nice job. And all right, we only got a few tokens left in the bag. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, so again, easy mode, super easy mode. I get to reveal any clue I want on anybody. <laughs> so, okay, let's narrow the odds down. I mean, it's really almost no chance unless that's the Blood Red Fez. No, I'm not going to waste the free thing on him. I'm just going to, I'm going to get him to five people and assume we'll be okay. So instead, let's start flipping for her. And we've got uh -oh, a weird tattoo. So she is almost 100% occultist, right? <laughs> all three of these would have to be uh, not purple. And you'll see that almost half of them are uh, purple. So yeah, very low chance that she's not a cultist. Although you do have to 100% confirm before you can take the action where you push them off the train and then you get to get rid of one of those like spell mystic tokens. So we can't do that yet. Okay, and the train chugs along. We're almost to another place where I assume there will actually be a gate this time. All right, it's Lucy's turn, and she's got everything open again. She can do her joint prayer, but again, there's <laughs> not that many uh, things there. Oh, that's right. I wanted to get the dude to my train car. So let's do uh, let's do gathering again. So gather up to three happy meh or suspect people. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to bring Seamus. Oh, my gosh. The train car is full. This is not great. <laughs> if a train car is full and you have to add somebody else to it, like you automatically get an insane person. So we'll try to do something about that. But okay, that's her first action. I have, uh, or that's her main action. I've gathered everybody in there. And now for a second action, Seamus, why did you want to have five people together? Well, I'm glad you asked, Lucy. Uh -oh. We got to see if he's a cultist because we are doing his little quest. Okay, he's got a talking parrot, which we can ask him about. <laughs> this is fun. This is another like side thing. If you've got an item like that, then you can once per game take a basic action to flip it over and ask him about his parrot. And you get to do like a little uh, adventure card. There's different one, like there's multiple copies for each card. So you don't know what will happen, but those are almost always beneficial. Please don't be the fez. It's an elder sign, which is purple. That's great. And we don't really care now. He is going to Constantinople though. So yeah, just to double check, does he have the blood red fez? There it is. No, he does not. Does he have Constantinople and he wants an artifact? No, he does not. Even if he did, he would have had an Elder Sign. Does he have four purple? No, he only has two. So he is not a cultist and we get the good thing. Disillusion. Wake up, people. You've been lied to, they shout. Things are not the way they appear. The nightmares are not real. They cannot harm you. The simultaneous disappearance of a monster must surely be a fortunate coincidence. So remove a chosen monster in any train car or remove a monster from Limbo. Cool. 
So they thought we were lying that there were monsters because the monsters disappeared. I like that kind of lie. Let's get rid of the green. Because first of all, he's in a car with open windows, so it'd be more dangerous. And also he's further along, so it's harder to get rid of. Because, like, Bucky might be able to go back and push the red guy with his action. All right, so nice. We've got one out of six passengers narrowed down. Now, maybe not so nice is that he had several blues, so it's less likely other people will have blues. And he didn't have the last non-Constantinople ticket. There's still a Milan ticket, which is brown, a brown Continental, Constantinople, and a purple Constantinople. And then for a second basic action, God, I would love to get some of these people out of here, but I can't with any basic action. So I guess we'll just leave it as is for now. All right. And oh, we got a train move. That's fast. So we'll move the train and then uh, do another token in a second. What is going on? They're... <laughs> ah, geez, I guess I didn't shuffle them well or something. Okay, it's fine. On reveal, spawn red, green, blue by the middle train. Oh my God, I was so happy I'd taken care of all the monsters. Yeah, I would have much rather had a gate than that. Uh, oh, it's right near. Uh, it's like a it's like a buffet for the monsters. No. Okay, in the second token. Ah, there's the spell being cast. That was the last one. So we are going to shuffle those back in in a second. So we've got one ritual token uh, plus the ritual power is equal to the number of tokens plus the number of insane people on the uh, train, which is why I said it was good to get rid of them. So it's only one right now. For each ritual power point, discard the leftmost vampire strength token. Uh, if we had any of the little mystic tokens that we can get from talking and such, we could spend them to temporarily reduce the ritual powers. So if like we had one here, we could have not discarded the vampire stuff. But now he'll kill insane and scared and hurt. Uh, there are a lot of hurt, but none of the other ones on the train at the moment. So it's not too terrible. And the train moves and we got so many monsters. Gosh. But that brings us to Bucky. So definitely he's going to rest. So he gets two of these, and I could skip drawing an event token this turn, or I could level up. So by the way, just to show you what the level up options are, each person has three extra skills that they don't start with, and they can all get the occult spell skill. You can get uh, spells by discarding those ritual tokens, and then they're super powerful, but they take away your, your uh, in, uh, sanity. But yeah, let's look at his bonus one. So rough talk, talk four with a suspect. For every two good things, reveal one clue of the suspect. So, you, oh, you don't even care if they match or not. But any any second negative one fails the talk. That sounds way too swingy. Hired gun. Move the suspect to a chosen train car. If possible, resolve their quest. So, like, we'd have to give them their quest if they can. And if they were a cultist, you don't suffer the consequences of their stuff. Eh, that one's fine. And then what's the last one? Fanning. Push zero. Oh, push a monster zero. You may spend up to five stamina. For each stamina you spend, push another monster plus. Uh, uh, so that'd be great if they were closer to the end, those big monsters at the front. Okay, and then you can upgrade the basic skills. So like True Grit could fix two people. Ooh, even if they're wounded, they would feel better? Oh my gosh, that's so good. Because we have so many wounded right now. And then Bounty Hunt would go to push all monsters of a chosen color in your train plus one. And for each falls behind. So yeah, it's just like a stronger push and you push more monsters. Posse... Choose any number of train cars with happy and angry people. Oh, and push them all without... They don't get hurt anymore. Wow, that's a really big upgrade for Posse. Trailblazing. Um, oh, would let you remove from each current landscape, which would be great if they had, like, multiple uh, gates on a single tile. And then this one is talk four now, and the penalty is not as bad. Okay. Of those, I really like the upgraded Posse. You being able to use it without getting hurt seems pretty nice. And what was the other one? I really like True Grid, because I do have a lot of injured people on the train right now all right so that's two upgraded these all come back i get five stamina and you can still do some basic actions and you know what what the hey for one basic action he's gonna go ahead and use the book of iod uh just because i don't like all these monsters <laughs> so i'm gonna lose one sanity and remove all monsters of a chosen color from all train cars and scared people turn insane we don't have any scared people and clearly I'll get rid of the reds since there's two of them. Maybe I should have saved that for like end game, but eh. and then for a second basic, since he's still in the sleeping car, let's get to full stamina. Yes. All right. And we're putting stuff back in the bag, except not that because we went through the whole thing and we are drawing out that again to boost up the spell power. So either of those will trigger another event turn. The train keeps rolling. We're about a third of the way there. Maybe I should speed the train up so I can push people more. Yeah. All right, so let's see. First, Lucy's going to talk. She's in a spot with a lot of people. She'll pick uh, the only Mewa there. All right, that was talk four. One, two. Ooh, that was good. Oh, never mind. <laughs> two. I mean, two good ones are still pretty nice. All right, so we got those to start. All right, and okay. No pairs yet. Oh, man. Okay, 
is great and everything to stop yet. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Don't jinx it. Don't. Okay. I feel like I should stop. Even though it's a one. I mean, it's only a one chance something bad will happen. Like, really? What are the odds? What are the odds? Okay. Right, let's go one more. Let's go one more. Let's go one more. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I don't care. I don't care. I'm stopping because it would be devastation if I failed right now. So I get to handshake somebody. Let's, uh, let's actually get Seamus because I'm worried about these monsters. And he's also right next to me, so that'll be easy. Okay, and then I'm getting any first class, any second class, and any blue, which I still have to refine that Fez, so that's kind of the best one, I think. Okay, so for second class, I don't know, let's find out what she wants. Oh, she wants... Oh, that's right, I can ask about the parrot. I can't, gotta remember that. But she wants to be somewhere with a wounded person. Oh, she already is. So there we go. And then I get to do any blue. Let's do her as well and see what's going on. She's got a brass doorknob I can ask about. Okay. And then for my first class, oh, here, Jacques only has one desire, so that might be instructive. Oh, he wants to, what does that mean? He just wants us to be friends with him? Oh, no, wants to be in a train car with another person with an active handshake. Okay, so like he wants to talk to our friends and see if we're trustworthy. Okay, interesting, interesting. So since he didn't have the other artifact, I still don't know where the other artifact is, he would have to have the Blood Red Fez or all four of these who need to be purple. So pretty low chance he's a cultist too. And now Lucy can do two actions. I want to get to the front and increase the speed, but I also want to like ask people about their fun things. So sure, first I want to ask Seamus about his talking parrot. Let's get a little uh, reading mode on. So again, there's multiple copies of each card. I think just two at this point. So I'm just picking one at random. But so far, they've all been pretty much good. Uh, the parrot's eyes widen and turn white as it begins to chant, emanating words way beyond the bird's enunciation capabilities. <laughs> Draw one random occult spell. You may immediately learn it. Okay. Now, to actually use a spell, you need to uh, gain the spell skill, but still, that's pretty cool. So what's our spell? Remove the last trade card from the game. And if uh, you, so you have to discard a sanity to cast a spell. If you remove one of your purple sanity, instead remove a chosen chain card from the game. <laughs> I think, interestingly, it doesn't say that like the passengers on it die. So well, that's very wild. I don't know if I actually want to use that parrot crazy person. All right, and then... For my second basic action, I am actually going to go forward because I want to speed up the locomotive. All right. And oh, interesting. So this is cool because first of all, we are not activating events yet. But now when events do activate, if that's on top, nothing will happen and then it'll get taken away. So that's pretty cool. When we reshuffle, we got one of each of the uh, types in there like that. And, all right. Here we go. Hey, it's finally a gate. <laughs> I can explain how this works. So energy drainer. When this uh, resolves, so by the way, when this resolves as the one type of vent token we didn't see, it'll resolve all the gates with text underneath. It says each investigator spends three stamina or loses one sanity. That's pretty nasty. But here's the awesome part. So how it works whenever you reveal a gate is every gate on that tile gets a token. And then you add additional tokens spread out among the gates that have been revealed equal to the insane people on the train. Guess how many insane people are on the train? Because I'm playing easy mode. <laughs> Zero. Yay. Mike tries to win. Mike tries to win. Uh, so I can get rid of that in like a second. Maybe I'll do the uh, the trailblazing action for uh, Bucky. That would work. And speaking of Bucky, I don't want to do like the bounty hunt or the posse until uh, Lucy gets up and increases the train speeds. What do I want to do? You can try to fast talk. I mean, he's not on a train to do it yet, but I can move. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here. First, I'll move here into... <laughs> crowded land uh <laughs> maybe not the best place to be now you know what for a second action because i'm curious tell me about that doorknob lady you recognize the knob but you're unable to pinpoint where from looking around for inspiration you see another knob on the door just like the one you hold in your hand flip the last most inactive skill oh cool we get another train power to use uh, it's talking about this stuff so now we can use the dining car huh for a basic action, we can move one of our gold tokens to a different skill so we could use the same skill twice. That's great. All right, that was two basics, and we're going to fast talk. Uh, we'll say the one meh guy that <laughs> everyone's talking to. I think Lucy talked to him too. All right, and we have five. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was good. So we already got a pair. Oh, and this one goes back. That's right. Yeah, we're getting super lucky here. Um, do, 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 do. First, okay, still no bad. Wow, I got almost everything. That's the crazy thing, so I might not get any more. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> um, guess, I mean, no reason to not stop. No reason to stop. Uh, whoa. Oh, okay, that, that doesn't do anything. So remember I said there are three of each one, so having a third copy does not help you in any way. Again, I think I should probably stop. I've already got two pairs, but it's only... Okay, I'll go one more. I'll go one, one more, one more. 
Okay, now I'll stop. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get to find out about somebody's ticket, anything about a second-class passenger, and then I can get an item or a uh, we'll call it to uh, let's get let's get the item. I'm still trying to get an artifact for what's her name? Silver Key. Ooh, gain up to three good sanity. But yeah, I'd rather maybe give it to... No, that's right. I'm pretty sure she's a cultist. <laughs> Why am I talking about giving her anything? <laughs> well, either way, I got it. Okay, and then ticket and second class. All right, so for second class, I definitely want to do her because I think if this is... Oh, it's purple. Let's check this as well. That's not purple. Okay, she's good. She's good because look, um, she can't have four purple because there's only two left. She's only got one purple. And the Blood Red Fez can only be on blue. So she is 100% not a cultist. And what does she want? She wants to be in a room with oh, with uh, an injured person. And she already is. She already is. So next turn, he can uh, give her her quest and make her happy. So that was both, right? I got second class and second class and ticket. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, I mean, this part is not part of my lucky tokens. This is just the game being kind of nice. Or maybe not nice because we could get, you know, if we drew this, the top ones would go away. And then we could draw that or that again. And have two event turns in a row. All right, that goes forward. And Lucy, do we need to do anything here? This guy's going to become scared. If we had a way to move him. Hmm. Well, for now, I won't worry about it. She's going to move here for one basic and then speed up. So now we get two more of these in the bag. And monsters will get pushed one extra with every push action. It was two stamina. She's getting pretty low. What should her actual action be? I guess even though it's... Uh, <laughs> We don't, like, really need it. It's kind of a waste. I think she'll do Cthulhu Mythos. Takes up to two from a gauge. She'll just take it from here. So we won't have to deal with that negative. And this goes back in the supply, so we're closer to not losing. All right, and... Oh, there we go. It's a good thing we just did that, because this is going to activate all of the text-based events. So let's go down. Activate all text-based events. The only one that is open is here. So we remove one essence from the game. Okay, then all red activate. One green activates. We spawn more blue. So there are no red. There's one green. What's he doing? He's by a train car with people. Yes. The curtain is not open. Then he moves to the right and then uh, turns one person there scared. Oh, but there's nobody there. I, I, I planned this better than I thought I did. Because, <laughs> yeah, suspects cannot be hurt by the monsters, especially since I'm like 99% sure she's a cultist and working with him. Okay, and then spawn blue. We're still super lucky. There's only one blue gate open. It's kind of wild. So there we go. And then nothing happens here because it's an X, but we do add another uh, negative token to the ritual. Oh, and I even look what the new one is. Uh, activate one monster, activate another monster for every two ritual points, turn a scared person insane. Uh, <laughs> there aren't any scared people for that bottom effect. We would have to activate two monsters with that. That's not lovely. But that's okay. We don't have to worry about that until the handshake comes out. So these three go, and these are again filled for potentially a very soon activation again. The train goes one. All right, so now it's Roland's turn. Oh, man. I thought Roland was with the lady who I just found out is not a cultist, but it's actually her all the way back here in the back of the train. Darn. Oh, but you know, I got a good combo here. Look at this. Okay, so Roland's first basic action is going to be to send Seamus with his friendship effect here, and then he's going to push plus one, which with the two speed is three. This green boy, boom, boom, boom. Then for Roland's second basic action, he's going to open the curtains here because posse requires him to be able to see. And oh my gosh. Uh, oh, wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> he has to be in a train car with the curtain. He is. Choose any number of train cars. This is the upgraded one with anger, happy people. And each of them push zero plus zero, which is two right now. Remember how Lucy was spreading happiness and joy wherever she went? Boom! Boom! <laughs> and then this guy, rah! All this off the train. We'll just have to push him again. And they don't get hurt. Upgraded posse. What the heck? I love it. All right, but that's all Bucky can do. And, oh, we got a train for a move. I'll get to that in a second. And then, we, oh, gosh, we had so many of those. So it was one move from the token and then another one from just the end of turn movement. Oh, here we go. So each of these gets one. Okay, and then... This So this is a new spawn point for red when we get to them. And then this one is in each train car with open windows, which is basically all of them. Oh, God. A mayor, a happy person turns angry and each investigator loses a sanity and almost every train car has open windows. That that can't stand. We got to deal with that. All right. So I think Lucy's going to run back. Oh, man. So far to the sanctuary car. Oh, and oof. That was all her stamina. But then she's going to lead prayer. So she could remove two from the same one since there's a lot of people there. Sadly, that doesn't actually matter here. But she can do it to any gate. And, I mean, red spawning is only 50-50. But then again, I guess this happening is pretty low odds because we just saw one of the tokens. Uh, let's, get, uh, the, let's get rid of the monster one. 
All right, nice. She'll rest next time with some good level ups. That'll be awesome. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, there's the spell. Ooh, but this is great. There is only one monster to activate. So we're just going to activate one. Remember, we have no... Oh, wait. Afterwards, scared turns insane. But he... Oh, gosh. He makes somebody insane. <sighs> Darn it. Okay. So the scared turns insane part won't matter. But yeah, we're going to activate one. And then we move to a new spell. All right, so what are you doing, you butt? <laughs> He's going to absorb our power. All investigators lose one sanity. Oh, we're not there. Never mind. I thought uh, Bucky was there. And then anybody turns insane, and then all insane people move one to the right. Uh, well, I guess I'll make it the mad person. Oh, man. I was doing so good with insanity. <laughs> all right, then the train advances. Oh, yeah. You know what? Forget that guy. <laughs> I'm going to have uh, Bucky move for his first action. Or no, I guess he could do something else first, couldn't he? Oh, yeah. She can move people to any chosen car. Oh, I hit the vampire. <laughs> any two people to any chosen car. That seems useful. And I got a couple options for this. I could get both of them out of there. Or I could move the... Oh, darn it. I can't... Well, I was going to say I could move the insane person into her place so she can heal him when she rests in a second. That actually sounds kind of smart. Or actually, <laughs> I got a different idea. I'm going to send this guy over to the vampire because he'll actually prefer to kill that guy, which will solve the problem. And, you know, I haven't gotten any of my seven uh, coffins down yet, so that shouldn't be too bad. And then for the second move, I don't know, let's get this one a little bit less crowded and have like happy people everywhere to do my posse. So that was one basic, two basics will move here and he'll bounty hunt the blue guy, which is a push zero. So he falls off the train with the two speed and we would have gotten to take a token off a blue gate, but there aren't any. All right. And oh, there we go. Vampire activating. So what are we doing? Uh, first, green and blue activate, but they're all dead. Red spawns. Well, that worked out great because I got rid of that one. So one red over here. That shouldn't be too hard to push. Okay, and then out of the angry, meh, and dead per uh, crazy person, the vampire chooses to eat the dead person. So he does kill him, and he uh, takes away one of his tokens, whatever he does. Uh, dead. And then he wanted to move right, but he can't. So he'll move left until he gets to a train car with people in it. But at least the uh, gates are open. Although with his current level, he would still kill the wounded guy that's there regardless. Okay, then we do a... Uh, Heat passenger's car, scuffle. In each train with two or more mad, oh, it's this again, there aren't any, uh, they would get wounded. In each train with one or more mad, all investigators, oh, it's the exact same one, except they move to the right. But yeah, wow, we only have one mad person. We're getting lucky with these that they're not causing anything else to happen. And then last one adds one of these. Okay, and now we're a little bit further away from badness. We haven't drawn any of our good tokens in a while, so we should be pretty clear for a bit. And that goes, okay. All right, we come back around to Lucy. She's definitely going to rest before she does anything. Get five stamina, get two level ups. She could get a spell to blow up a train car. Uh, good Shepherd, banish one monster for each green in the Orient Express. Oh my God. There's so many of them. Although again, banish just hangs out to them for a little bit. Oh my God, then I removed one from Limbo. Confession, talk four uh, with a person. And if I succeed, I also get to reveal anything on that person. That is so good. Exorcism, in a train with the vampire and open things. Move the vampire to a chosen train. Oh, wow. she's there right now. She could just take care of him. He's just so freaking good. And what's her upgraded ones? Calm down. Can even change insane people. Trusted interlocutor is still, oh, talk five instead of talk four. And success, you may send this person anywhere. That's okay. Gathering, gather anybody from adjacent train cards. Eh. Joint prayer. If you're in the sanctuary and at least two people are there, okay. We should help them send any number of happy people to distinct train cars. And in each of those scared, oh man, so she could just like send a ton of happy people and heal almost every hurt person in the train. That seems too good not to get. Okay, so let's do that. She's going to upgrade that. And then where was that really cool one? Um, oh yeah, well, these are all really cool, but I like the vampire one. So let's get that vampire exorcism one because she's literally chilling with a vampire right now. And then she can still do some basic actions. Maybe not this turn, but maybe next turn. Look at this. She could turn this guy happy and then use her little we should help them thing and send. There's only three hurt people on the train. She could heal all of them, which is ridiculous. So sure, let's go ahead and set that up with one of her basic actions. Yay. And then I think besides that, she'll stay where she is. All right. And oh, train move. We'll get to that in a second. Another train move. Okay, maybe we should not get to it in a second. No, we haven't reached a new spot yet. We will at the end of the turn. And vampire again. Oh, yeah, we got to get, get uh, him taken care of. So yeah, it was train move, train move. And now at the end of the turn, train move again. Another big one. Ooh, okay, a green spawn point. And what's this one? Each train car with open windows. Oh, man, that's not good. Again, we have tons of open windows. Oh, yeah, crud. I got to take care of both of those. 
But we haven't drawn that token yet, but that means that there's a ton of them in the uh, in the bag. So shoot, 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 shoot. I gotta do something. But hey, we have no insane people, so we don't add any extra ones beside that. All right, see, I think he has to do uh, trailblazing, right? To get rid of some of these things. Yeah. And then should he do any basic actions too? Oh, he can go talk to her and her power can get... Yes, yes, perfect. So he'll go one, two to talk to her. It's all his stamina, but he's about to rest. And she can remove a thing from anywhere. I'll do one of these and I'll plan to do the other one in a second with his trailblazing. It has to be a current landscape. We're not going to return the train to the bag because that would only matter if there were multiple things on the gate. All right. So we didn't get rid of the spawning monster, but we took care of the other nasty things that might happen. And what's coming our way? Oh, another train move. Like I said, it's fast. We're more than halfway there. And oh, it's our good one. Uh, turn angry or scared? Meh. Jeez, we have the best behaved crew ever. That's the only angry person left on the train right there. All right, Lucy's turn. First things first, let's deal with the vampire. because They're about to activate. So that'll be exorcism. Uh, and yeah, the window's open. So we're going to move him to any chosen car which will be right here where there is literally nobody for him to mess with. Because again, uh, suspects can't be hurt by vampires and monsters. And then, yeah, I don't think uh, we're going to do any basic actions. That was a quick turn. So I want her to stay here to send the happy people in a second. All right. And, oh, another double? God, why do I have so many of that specific one? That's cool, though. All right, now what's Bucky going to do? He's got to rest <laughs> for sure. So we'll get five stamina back. Uh, get to level up or do things twice. Oh, we can skip. I'm going to skip drawing an event token, I think. And then maybe also get, you know, yeah, I kind of like the new landscaping that removes one from each gate on your landscape. That's pretty great. Although we're doing really good with landscapes, honestly. Um, maybe, uh, maybe the better version of Bounty Hunt. Although now the train's faster. Nah, yeah, I think I will get better trailblazing. So that was one. And the other one was uh, the skipping thing, his uh, lucid skill option. Okay, and then for basic actions, he's going to, I think, banish the monster that's next to him. Because there's a pretty good chance he'll activate in a second, and I don't want anyone to get killed. And then he's going to give what's-her-name what she wants. Yeah, because he's here with her. We, I, I think I'm 100% sure of it. She's good, right? And she's with a wounded person. And they're about to not be wounded because, uh, um, what's-her-name, Lucy can heal everybody in a second. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and see. So... Okay, she wanted a book. And, ooh, there's the last artifact. So it is great. She's not a cultist because she doesn't have a Constantinople ticket and an artifact. And she didn't have four purple, but we got rid of more purples and more artifacts. So less chance of there being any cultists overall. Although I still don't know where the friggin' blood red fez is. <laughs> but yeah, we completed her quest. And let's see what it says. Withdrawal symptoms. From a bag, they extract gauze and a large vial. After filling it to the brim, they seal the collected bud, blood. <laughs> Seeing your surprised face, they explain, Oh, I see. There must have been a misunderstanding. I'm here to help, but not that bloody wretch. Okay, so place one X on the vampire board. The next time the vampire would activate, discard. Oh my gosh. So the vampire's on a useless train, so we're going to skip the vampire the next two times. That's awesome. Yeah, here's these. That just kind of reminds you that you're going to skip it. Yeah, so to check in quickly on suspects, we have no idea about anything with her. But neither of these second class uh, people are suspects anymore. We are almost 100% sure that she is a cultist. <laughs> um, and then he probably isn't. Because there's only one thing that could be the blood red fez. And then he could be. I mean, both of these have six out of the like nine remaining blues that could be the blood red fez. So it's a pretty good chance one of them is going to be a cultist. All right. But that was it. And we. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Lucky mode. Easy mode. Uh, we can reveal anything. If I can just get one more purple on her, I'll know she's a cultist. So let's go ahead and try to make that happen. Ah, don't do that. Um, oh, she's not a cultist yet. She's got a fake beard. God, it would kind of suck if she wasn't a cultist. <laughs> we wasted a ton of actions trying to find that out. All right. The train moves one. Okay, now we get to Lucy, and this one's going to be beautiful. Send any number of happy people from her train car to distinct train cars. So she's got three in her place. She's going to send one to that crowded car, one here. And I think one can just, you can't quite see it. I think this one can just stay where it is, probably. And then they all turn wounded to mess. So literally, again, this is easy mode, everyone, easy mode. But literally, everyone on the train is happy or meh. They're just feeling great. They know we're doing awesome. Everyone's going to win. And then honestly, for her last two actions, I think we're going to have her move her to the sleeping car and then sleep there. So it gets her up to one more stamina, and then she can do it again next turn. Because I don't really know what else we need to do quite yet. All right, and oh, there we go. So we're activating all text effects. Only one is this one to take away an essence, which is fine. Then the vampire tries to activate, but doesn't. And we do have to draw one of these. Come on, you're all happy. In each train car with no happy people, a wounded person becomes dead. None of that applies. And then in each train car, all scary people move right. We are just so happy. Everyone is doing great. Why do we need to stress out? <laughs> um, 
There are no monsters to activate. Oh, but green spawns. And there's actually a second green gate. That's the one we left open. So yeah, but hey, posse, baby. I'm going to posse him right out of here. <laughs> but we still got a doubled up mask. So that'll be happening again soonish. And the train is getting close to the end. <sighs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, I don't want to make the video too long. I try to keep all my previews and stuff under an hour or so, and this one's probably already over. So I'm going to uh, take the rest of the game off camera until I get to the end, show if I uh, win or not. Again, in easy mode, I'm guessing that maybe I will. And then I'll give you my thoughts on the game. All right, so there we go. Um, I made it safely, <laughs> as you probably imagined, playing on super easy mode and getting lucky with draws. Uh, so Jean should not be a cultist. Yep. And yeah, I, I killed. <laughs> she was indeed a cultist. She had the blood red fez in addition to five or four or five purples. So I killed her. I pushed her off the train, which also lowers the rituals tokens by one. So because I guess like there the cultists actually cast him a spell. So that's always nice. And then the chef should also not be a cultist. And yep. Yeah, because I was able to do process of elimination of how many purples could be less. Uh, her, she was already good and I already uh, did her quest. I already did his quest. And she was also a cultist. I killed her. We had two. And we did have a ton of open gates for spawning at the end, but I uh, increased the train speed to three and drew like three movements at a time. So yay, we made it. We win. So thoughts on the game. And keep in mind that, you know, this is still a prototype, but I got to say, this feels like basically a complete game. Like if they just had all the components done, I would buy this right now and I'd be happy with it. <laughs> so uh, things that I like, ton of stuff. I love the the character actions. I love how unique each of the characters is and how even within that uniqueness, you can kind of level them up in different ways. Now, I could see players leaning towards certain level ups each game, but I think that's going to change slightly based on like which gates come out early and which other characters are with you. Because, yes, uh, Bucky has certain ways to like level up his fighting better. But if you already have some fighters where there aren't that many monsters spawning and that's not the main crisis to manage, he could level up differently. So besides that, like tiny concern that sometimes maybe you'll level up in a similar way. This is great. I like that uh, the actions are so unique for each character. I like that they vary from game to game. I love the little like choices you make in the beginning to get cool little bonuses, which have sometimes pretty big impact on stuff. I love how you level up. Like everything about this is my catnip. I like the way you try to push your actions further and like the longer you can go without resting and finding ways to make your diverse actions useful, the better bonus you'll get when you finally do rest. And the simple turns, the quick turns, the simple action system, I think it flows smoothly. I think it's great. Uh, they only sent me four characters, I think, for the prototype, but I imagine they might have more for the final game. And yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> you know, more of this, more of these kind of systems are excellent. I love this kind of like unique character action stuff. As for the uh, components, you know, the game is, of course, just an early prototype, but I love this like 3D train. This has such a fun toy factor. These little curtains that open and close, the vampire hanging off the side, the monsters just running along. <laughs> I think it's uh, really going to be uh, fun for people who want to get into the theme. And this is such a thematic game. Like there's nothing you're doing in the uh, game. Nothing, not a single action I think I can point to that doesn't have a hundred percent thematic justification like you know look at this salon gambit i talk to somebody who's willing to talk to me if i succeed then they kind of become meh if i fail then we get into a fight and they get hurt you know but i find out something about the other passengers because they saw something like all of that is just perfect you know we're getting a posse together to go attack the monsters or bounding hunting the monsters myself and like uh finding out something from them to help me close the gates like i, I just think this game bleeds theme and they they keep it all so integrated it's awesome there's also a ton of variety in the game for the type of game it is, which is a crisis management game. You know, it's not like a scenario based, like you're doing something completely different. It's not a campaign game. It's it's competing with games like, you know, well, it's, it's on an epic scale competing with games like The Loop and Pandemic and that kind of stuff. But I love that all these landscapes will be completely different. And again, depending on your starting landscape, you'll have even a different configuration of what types of landscapes come out when and which train car powers you have, what order they'll be in, where the people will be, what their distribution of effects will be, which of them you'll be friends with at the start, you know, which characters you use, which of these little things you get, how you level up. I, I just think there's tons of variety in how it'll play out for, again, the type of game it is. You know, don't go in expecting that it'll be a completely different game. Like, ooh, this time we're not on the train. No, you're, you're always on the freaking train. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're on the train with different things happening, and I think that's great. I also think this is fun. I had not played with like the two easy tokens. Uh, I've been playing mainly normal difficulty and losing abysmally. So I thought like one or two wouldn't change things that much, but hey, I got a report. If you want the game to be easier, I won pretty convincingly here. And yes, I had some other luck, but just adding some green tokens in here to slow down the advance of death was enough to make the game like 
to, I would say, almost like a family weight where I could play with my kids. Now, again, if you take these out, my win rate, I've never won. <laughs> but uh, the designer said that like an average person might have like a third, you know, 33% win rate and a really good player will have like a 50% win rate. So just adding one of these in, I think, should make it where a more average player might be able to win maybe more than half of the time. And again, if you do like, I didn't add a ton of them, I think that works smoothly. But the tension of this, this is again, the variety, like different things are going to be crises in different games. If you get the X's at certain times, if certain monsters accurate uh, activate, you can see what's coming to a great extent, like which way the vampire is going to go or which things are going to activate and not, uh, which ritual is about to go. So yeah, there's randomness in how things resolve, but you get a lot of strategic advance notice on it. So I appreciate that. It doesn't feel like it's just a luck fest and you get uh, screwed by bad chance. And then this thing I think is fun. You know, you have a lot of information and they did nice things to make it more engaging than it might otherwise be. You know, it's not just like basic clue. So the fact that like you'll you'll find out they have little things and then you can ask them about it and get a cool little bonus. That's awesome. The fact that they have these quests and if you do it for a cultist, terrible stuff will happen. But if you do it for a good person, then there are benefits. You know, they, they took what other kind of deductive games might have had a very simple deduction system and layered in mechanical things that make it way more gratifying and thematic and interesting than it could be otherwise. So it, it does have more moving pieces. And that's maybe <laughs> a big complaint about the game overall for some gamers, which is just that there are a lot of moving pieces, you know, like I can barely fit all this stuff on my table. It took me a while to teach you what all the things did in the game. It is not a straightforward game. The first times you play, like at this point, it flows super smoothly. I got to say that, you know, this is my fifth time playing I want to say and it's it's flowing great like I don't have to look anything up the rules are easy to remember at least for me but <laughs> like Peter and Jerry uh, played it at PAX U and they had barely any idea what was going on in their first game so I, I think this one will be a lot to grok and it takes up a lot of space there's a lot of things going on they, they added in all these thematic touches but they're thematic touches that, <laughs> you know, just require more upkeep. Like, oh, there's a vampire. Oh, there's a spell. And oh, there's also these tokens. And oh, there's also three different types of monsters. And oh, you got some spell books, you know. And oh, you got you got your, your artifacts and your grimoire. And it's just a ton of stuff. But once you get past it, I do think it plays pretty easily. I think it's an epic experience that doesn't feel too, I don't know, egregious in like the downtime. Turns move quickly. Enemy turns don't happen that often. And when they do, they go quickly too. So yeah, I love this game when I played it at Gen Con. I love it now even more that I've gotten to play it more. I can't wait to see what they're going to add in the crowdfunding campaign. I mean, even though, again, what they sent me, like right now, if this was just not, you know, hand cut by somebody, because <laughs> this is like a handmade prototype. If this was a printed prototype with nothing changed, like same graphic design, same art, same like basic construction of the train, I would buy this today. And I don't say that about a lot of crowdfunding games. I'm sure they're going to continue to like to take feedback and make it even better and add more content and more characters and all that kind of stuff. But even if they didn't, this one would already be a winner for me. So that's the highest recommendation I can give. I love this game at Gen Con and I continue to love it. If you like thematic like uh, crisis management or adventure kind of games, I think you might like it too. That is Horror in the Orient Express. Thanks for watching. Go check out the crowdfunding page whenever it's live and we'll see you at the next stop.